Hey, Bob. Hey, Chuck. What you doing? Uh, just thinking. About what? Uh, science stuff. Like what? Like how I can know for sure that the Earth is actually rotating around and around all day every day, instead of sitting still. What do you mean? Well, you know, we can't actually feel the Earth move, can we? So how can we know for sure that it is moving? Well, the whole reason we have sunrises and sunsets is that the Earth is turning on its axis, which makes the sun appear like it's rising and setting. Yeah, but how do we know the sun isn't just moving around the Earth? Maybe that's the real reason we have sunrises and sunsets. I've been reading some interesting stuff online. In fact, there's some literature I'd like you to read. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't go falling down any rabbit holes, Bob. I know for sure that the Earth is rotating on its axis. You know why? Back in 1851, there was a scientist named Leon Foucault who used a freely swinging pendulum to physically prove that the Earth is rotating. Really? How'd he do that? I'll show you. Follow me onto this here merry-go-round. Now, obviously, we're spinning round and round, right? But let's pretend for a moment that we can't tell that we're spinning. If we tossed a ball back and forth between ourselves, would that prove that we on the merry-go-round are rotating? Well, no. The ball keeps going back and forth between you and me. And the same thing would happen if the merry-go-round weren't turning at all. Exactly. But now let's pretend that the ball was on a string and that it could swing freely back and forth in the same direction while we are turning on the merry-go-round. Then could we be sure that we on the merry-go-round are moving? Well, sure, because then the ball would grow closer and farther away from us as we turn. It might even eventually clonk us on the head. Exactly. Well, that's basically what Leon Foucault showed with his pendulum experiment. He took a very long wire and a heavy bulb, which was designed to swing back and forth, back and forth of its own weight, over a line on the ground. At first, the pendulum swung back and forth along that line. But after a while, it started to move away from that line. That's because the bulb was swinging back and forth in the same direction, but the earth was turning underneath it. Wow! Yeah, pretty clever experiment, huh? Say, does that experiment work anywhere on the planet? Strangely enough, it doesn't. Huh? Well, here's the deal, Bob. Picture a clock on the surface of the North Pole and imagine our ball swinging back and forth between the 12 and the 6, with the 12 on top. Once the Earth started turning, the ball would start swinging over different numbers. How long do you think it would take for the ball to start swinging over the 12 and the 6 again? Well, I reckon it would do that again after one full rotation of the Earth. That's right. But the same thing doesn't happen when you're near the equator. When the clock is on the equator, the ball will keep swinging between the 12 and the 6, even as the Earth continues to rotate. This has to do with the fact that the Earth turns on its axis, and that the axis runs north to south, not east to west. Oh, wow! That's strange, but neat! Yeah, Foucault showed that the pendulum would complete a rotation fastest at the North Pole, and that it would take 24 hours. But it would take longer as you moved closer to the equator. And when you reach the equator, the pendulum could swing back and forth forever, but it would never stop swinging between the 12 and the 6 on the imaginary clock. He sounds like a really clever guy. Thanks so much, Chuck, for teaching me about Leon Foucault's cool experiment, and for proving to me that the Earth really does rotate. You're a true pal. You're welcome, Bob. <laughs>